Let's come before our Lord in prayer this morning. Our Heavenly Father, our Lord God, we seek to honour you in all we do, in all we say, in all we avoid, in all we seek. Lord, you are our God, our strength, our peace, our wisdom, our comfort, our power. And in you, our sovereign God, we trust. We trust you, Lord, for those in our church's family whose health is failing, who are living with extreme and chronic pain as we lift them to you. We trust you, Lord, for our family members and friends who are right now lost. We pray that our witness to, to you through the way we live and proclaim your gospel reaches their hearts. We ask you to place other Christians in their paths also, Lord, that they would come to the saving knowledge of Christ Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. Lord, we trust you for the leaders elected yesterday, whether they are who we voted for or not, whether we agree with their policies or not. Lord, first and foremost, we pray for their salvation and discipleship if they are not saved yet. For the Christians who have been elected, we know it will be hard for them, Lord, and we ask for an extra portion of your strength for endurance. We trust you with the community where we live. I think of how many people tried to harm or kill John Wesley when he preached the gospel to regional communities, but also remember how many were saved, Lord. And so we trust you for the ones we haven't met yet, the ones who will come to know you, Lord, and proclaim with lives and voices that Jesus Christ is Lord. May they be in our hearts and our minds every day. We trust you, Lord, with this, your church, and with what you ask of us over the coming months and years as we worship you, as we reach out to the people here with your good news, your hope, your promise. And we trust you for the strength and energy to do this with you. And so, Lord, we thank you for the words that you gave us through your Son to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Our third passage of scripture today comes from Nehemiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 19. Nehemiah 6, verses 1 to 19. When word came to Sambalat, Tobiah, Geshem the Arab and the rest of our enemies that I had rebuilt the wall and not a gap was left in it though up to that time I had not set the doors in the gates Sambalat and Geshem sent me this message come let us meet together in one of the villages on the plain of Ono but they were scheming to harm me so I sent messages to them with this reply I'm carrying on a great project and cannot go down why should you why should the work stop while I leave it and go down to you? Four times they sent me the same message, and each time I gave them the same answer. Then the fifth time, Sanballat sent his aide to me with the same message, and in his hand was an unsealed letter in which was written, It is reported among the nations, and Geshem says it is true that you and the Jews are plotting to revolt. And therefore you are building the wall. Moreover, according to these reports, you are about to become their king and have even appointed prophets to make this proclamation about you in Jerusalem. There is a king in Judah. Now this report will get back to the king. So come, let us meet together. I sent him this reply. Nothing like what you are saying is happening. You are just making it up out of your head. They were all trying to frighten us, thinking their hands will get too weak for the work and it will not be completed. But I prayed, now strengthen my hands. One day I went to the house of Shemaiah, son of Deliah, and the son of Mehetabul, who was shut in at his home. 
He said, let us meet in the house of God inside the temple and let us close the temple doors because men are coming to kill you. By night, they are coming to kill you. But I said, should a man like me run away? Or should someone like me go into the temple to save his life? I will not go. I realized that God had not sent him, but that he had prophesied against me because Tobiah and Sambalat had hired him. He had been hired to in intimidate me so that I would commit a sin by doing this, and then they would give me a bad name to discredit me. Remember Tobiah and Sambalat, my God, because of what they have done. Remember also the prophet Noadiah and how she and the rest of the prophets have been trying to intimidate me. So the war was completed on the 25th of Elal in 52 days. When all our enemies heard about this, all the surrounding nations were afraid and lost their self-confidence because they realized that this work had been done with the help of our God. Also in those days, the nobles of Judah were sending many letters to Tobiah and replies from Tobiah kept coming to them. For many in Judah were under oath to him since he was son-in-law to Shekaniah, son of Ara, and his son Jehoadan had married the daughter of Meshullam, son of Berechiah. Moreover, they kept reporting to me his good deeds and then telling him what I said, and Tobiah sent letters to intimidate me. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. As we let God's word dwell in our hearts this morning, and there's a lot of it, I know, I pray that it will do just that, that it will be in your minds, in your hearts today. As we let it do that, why don't we continue to worship together with a wonderful song. I love this hymn, number 64 in your green books, if you have them, The Lily of the Valley. I found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. The lily of the valley, in him alone I see all I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. Let's worship. <laughs> 